So in part two, I'll be finishing off the uh, little watercolour study uh, near Belle Isle Castle, near Enniskillen. I'll just put a drop of water on those colours. So now I'm going to gradually darken the picture and I'll start off, I think, with the, uh, the tree. So ultramarine and burnt sienna. That will give me a nice dark greyish green. Not too much water and using the brush strokes slightly um, elongated this will help to give the impression of um, ivy on the side of the tree or well all up the tree and a few branches as well Keeping the brush strokes slightly sideways, leaving little bits of the previous screen showing. Spiky at the edges, the leaves, of the ivy. Uh, and this will still go quite a bit darker. We'll build it up bit by bit. More dark green, greyish green. And as I go darker and darker, the effect of the dark will be to make everything else, in the, particularly in the, the background, middle distance, look brighter. So I'll come back to that in a while. Just move around the rest of it. Again, using the same kind of brush strokes for these overhanging leaves at the top of the picture. Bring those down into the sky a bit. various points a few branches as well so uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine perhaps a bit of cadmium red in it too that will blacken it a bit more so I can use this for the branches as well Don't get too stuck in one place, but move around the picture. One of the dangers when you, you're doing anything that's very repetitive like this is, is not to concentrate. Um, but you need to consider every brush stroke. <coughs> and um, when you get fed up in one place, move over to a different part of the picture. So there's lots of greens in here. And I, I'm varying uh, the greens when I go back to the palette using a slightly different green. Gradually we'll go darker and darker. Leaving bits of the previous colours showing. This is quite blobby in a way. Um, you know, the leaves that I'm trying to suggest are quite blobby. And the bits of white um, and the light colours come towards us and the dark uh, looks like you can look right into the depths of all the undergrowth here. Again, I'll come back to this in a while, move around the picture. Plenty of leaves around the top. Um, I 
think before I do much on the foreground here, I'll just do a bit on those trees. So using a little bit of uh, bluish grey, just go over some of those background trees and isolate some of the light bits. So we've got the uh, the dark bits making the light greens stand out and come forward. And at the base where the trees meet the field, I want a bit of darker green in this area in particular where the, the shadows underneath the trees are in the distance. Varying the greens, greens. So there's an impression Hopefully there are of lots of different kinds of trees just by the, the different varying greens and the different tones. And then these field divisions, whether these are hedges or ditches, I'm not sure. And there'll be shadows falling across here as well. I'm going to put a bit of ultramarine, mostly weak ultramarine, in those shadows. I think ultramarine works really well in shadows. Because the sunlight's coming from the left hand side, so the shadows are falling across the field in this direction, keeping the brush strokes horizontal ish. And I'll separate those fields in a minute once those shadows are dry. If they're not dark enough, I can go over them once this is all dried. Back to all my foliage around the edge. Using the tip of the brush, nice sharp brush. Uh, this brush is a, a number six. Uh, it's a um, an imitation sable brush. But I use all kinds of different brushes. Some natural hair. Mostly um, synthetic brushes. I like synthetic brushes in particular because I do quite a lot of um, rough work. I'm quite uh, rough with some of the the brushes I use <clears throat> and um, synthetic brushes enable me to, uh, to, to use them fairly um, vigorously. Uh, you know, I do quite a lot of scrubbing and um, pushing and shoving with the brush, quite rough with them. Um, and, and the synthetic brushes seem to me to be uh, better equipped to do that than a softer sable and I think it depends what you're doing but sable brushes I think are meant to be used nice and wet and um, often some of the stuff I do is I use dry brush and damp brush um, dragging a brush quite often and that seems to work well with um, synthetic brushes so just bring some of these down a little bit and a few leaves on these branches. Darker and darker. Now the darker right hand side of the tree this tree in particular 
because the light's coming from the left hand side. You can put a little bit of yellow beside the on the sunny side and the dark side the um, thalo blue or Windsor blue intense blue and burnt sienna plenty of burnt sienna in the mix plenty of it Go, give me a really nice powerful dark green And uh, I'm blacken it a little bit with some um, cadmium red and thalo blue. That'll make it extremely dark. A few fine twigs growing in the undergrowth. either attached to this tree or to a, a different one. Very, very light touch as well. Um, I like the way ivy grows up trees. I don't know if it does the trees any good, probably not, <laughs> but um, it's very beautiful, I think. just remembering to leave bits of the light through all that well uh, that those shadows have dried now so I can just put some slightly more darker bits in being careful not to go quite as dark in the background uh, as in the foreground the colors just want to be a little bit weaker I think further away And uh, here there's a, uh, some fence posts to go in. And maybe further away. don't know if that's a hedge or a ditch or so it doesn't really matter but it helps to get a sense of distance that these all these horizontal ish lines get closer and closer together further away just drag a bit of green, mid-green, and touch it down. That's what I call splodging, where it hits and misses. If you do that, you've got to be a bit careful when you're doing that, that you your brush isn't too wet, because if you pick up paint that's too watery and you put it on, you just get a solid brush mark like that. But as you run out of paint, can you see what's happening? Get rid of some, so my brush is damp. Put the whole of your brush on, not just the tip, but the whole brush. It's like trying to paint with the wrong end of the brush. And if, if your paint isn't too watery, you just touch your brush on and get some lovely effects that way, which work, works well for all kinds of different things. And uh, here it's suggestive of um, lots of different things growing. And the white bits, hopefully, are flowers. So uh, I'm just going to darken that tree a bit more. Thalo blue or intense blue. Um, it, you could use Prussian blue, um, you know, instead of the uh, Windsor blue or the Thalo blue. Prussian blue is not quite as bright um, as uh, the Thalo blue. So uh, I, I prefer the, the Thalo uh, it's a very powerful colour though, very um, 
powerful staining color so you need to be careful when you use it not to um, not to put too much in your mixes because it can very easily dominate and if you get it on a picture and you decide you want to take some off it might not come off too easily because it, as I say it stains paper and um, can be very difficult to get it off <laughs> also difficult to get it off your clothes as well so be careful but a lovely color when used carefully so some more darks in here it's all quite blobby and impressionistic really um, and the same on the other side want some more nice darks in this foreground area but uh, being careful not to have too much of the same colour, but to vary it a bit, vary the strength of colour as well. And in front of all this, or at the top of all this, there will be, I could perhaps use a finer brush in a minute, but there'll be lots of grasses and vegetation springing up. And some of these whites could be in shadow. These, uh, uh, cow, this cow parsley, so ultramarine and hardly any cadmium red. And over some of those, you can paint them that bluey grey. And it just knocks them back a little bit. The, the ones that are in sunlight can be white, but those that are in shadow, just a bit bluer grey. And... Ultramarine, I think, works really nicely in shadows. Just a few little bits of dark amongst all these trees in the distance. bit darker, a bit darker. There's nothing wrong with using uh, ready-made greens if you've got greens that you like. Um, I often just mix my own using yellows and blues. Um, I tend to just stick to um, a couple of blues, that's the ultramarine and the phthalo blue. And um, with those two mixed together, you can mix cobalt blue. And um, the two yellows I use, cadmium yellow or cadmium yellow light, and lemon yellow or Hansi yellow light. Right, some more darks amongst us, a bit darker still. Bring in some very dark leaves so I can use the either the phthalo blue or the phthalo green doesn't really matter plenty of burnt sienna plenty of burnt sienna to blacken it a little bit more put in a touch of red not too much or it'll go brown if it goes brown just put a bit more of the blue or the, the green in and uh, some Bigger brush strokes are suggestive of nearer leaves, which would appear bigger. Some clusters don't have, really have to worry too much about branches. Probably wouldn't see a great deal. I might put one or two finer ones in. This brush isn't quite fine enough for thin lines for uh, branches, so I'll use a different brush for those. Maybe okay for some thicker branches. And more leaves. 
leaves keeping some of the, the lighter ones as you go darker and darker just be careful not to completely obliterate the uh, previous lighter greens but start light and build it up and uh, a few more darks right at the bottom here I'll get a finer brush now and put in some more um, fine grasses. So this is a, a naught, a, a, a synthetic sable naught, but uh, any brush with a good point is fine. few little blobby bits for like seed heads. Different angles. Think about some uh, plants growing across others, grasses falling across others. More darks. just want a few more very darks. The Burnt Sienna, Thalo Blue, Cadmium Red. So it's almost a, a blackish green, almost a black. But you could use black with some of those colours if you wanted. Um, some people say you should never use black, but um, my view is that if you like it and it works for you, then I don't see why not. But on its own, it can often look a bit dead and uninteresting. So um, maybe add other colours to it. So it's the, the trees darkest on the right hand side as the lights sort of coming from left generally. And some very dark bits to the right and the left of centre. So you could just maybe imagine that you're emerging from this shadowy woodland into the sunlight there. You could just pass through the middle bit there uh, into the sunshine. Um, and one last thing, if any of your, um, if, when you're painting grass and things, if any of it looks a little bit dreary and dull, then you can brighten it up by going over it with a wash of um, lemon yellow or Hansi yellow light, Hansi yellow, clean Hansi yellow, just a little bit of um, 
thin lemony yellow over anything that's dull. Um, they, these were the clouds that I did before, but if you know if if, if you go over it with the the lemon yellow, it makes the sunshine, doesn't it? I'm not saying you should do that in clouds, but you know, if you've got really dreary looking grass, um, then just give it a wash or a partial wash of some lemon yellow. I'll just put a little bit in that middle section and it just brightens it up a little bit. A very, th maybe a bit there, just uh, helps to bring the sunshine out wherever you need it. And any of these white bits that um, I've got that are left out that I'd, if I don't want them, I can go over them with pale greens or yellow. I, I like to leave quite a bit of it white for the um, cow parsley. But I think that will just about do me. And uh, so very quickly dry that. very quickly dry that the hair dryer and um, then take the tape off and uh, this tape is um, it's like masking tape but it's this one's called framing tape uh, it's what goes on the back of picture frames uh, and I, I use it a lot of it's just a little bit stickier than uh, most masking tapes but you've got to be a bit careful when you take your tape off that you always take it away from the picture because it can tear if you're not careful if it does tear it just go over it with your fingernails and there's the finished picture. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed that. Um, have a go at it yourself, and I look forward to seeing you next time.